you won't believe it, but this aircraft is fully electric, can take off like a helicopter, has no cockpit, no pilot and no controls. Are you ready for the future? We blended the Part 23 aircraft with a helicopter, so we get the best of both worlds. The pilot is on the ground and it's not a regular pilot. The aircraft can make its own decisions. This is really top of line. Welcome and bonjour to this year's Paris Air Show. Finally, after the four-year break, we are back and we are at Boeing's booth together with Whisk, one of Boeing's recently acquired startups. Whisk is another game changer in the future of aviation. Like Lilium, it's an EV tall aircraft, but they go one step further. As they don't have a cockpit, this aircraft will fly fully autonomously. Hi, Sebastian. Hi. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. You are very excited to be here and learn everything about your sixth generation demonstrator aircraft. Thank you. It's so exciting to be here as well. So this is the generation six of our aircraft. Uh, our company is called Whisk. We've been around for more, more than 10 years now. We've done, we've developed like five generations of aircraft before this one. We have like more than 1600 flights under our belt, no accident. So this one is the product that we want to take to, to the market, to certification. And and so in a nutshell, we blended a typical aircraft, a Part 23 aircraft, with a helicopter. And so it has like propellers, they allow you to take off and land vertically. And we also have the wing so that when you're uh, airborne, you can just fly on the wing and then uh, go a long distance. So we get the best of both worlds. Another feature of that aircraft is that it's battery powered. So we use like a top of the line uh, batteries, high energy, high power densities. Um, to power all those motors. It's full electric, so like there is no fluid on board. So there is no hydraulics, no fuel. Maintenance is super easy because like we've limited the number of moving parts. We have electric motors, you can see them here. We have 12 of them. Each propeller has five blades. The pitch angle can be adjusted uh, depending on the tilt angle of the propeller. So it's an electric motor. We have the controller right there. It's fully integrated. And uh, we also have six in the back. This is the same electric motor, same part number. So for us, it's great. It's one design and one, one uh, certification uh, pass. So then they sit on the boom, and so th there is no fuel in the boom. The boom is pretty much empty. It's a bunch of wires and uh, controllers. They, they're here to hold like the propellers. We have the wing, which is uh, made of um, composite material. Uh, we have three flap runs on the back. They allow us to generate additional lift when we get to, at a lower speed. You can see, see them here. So they go up and they go down. We can talk about the tail. You'll see it's a very standard basic cross tail. It's lightweight. It allows us to move the CG forward. It's very simple design, very robust, uh, like a reduced number of parts. We have like a one rudder. We have elevators on both sides. Very typical aircraft design. Uh, in the back, right behind the cabin. So if you look here, You'll see we have like four passengers. So before I talk about the cabin, we have the, the, the Avionics bay here. We don't see it here because it's a model, but the real aircraft is exactly like this. Uh, and then so you have the Avionics bay, you have the battery packs in the back, you, we have all the flight control computers, the Avionics computers, uh, all the wiring starts from there. So the energy is coming from here. We have the controllers that like uh, distribute and protect uh, the energy and then sends it to the, uh, to the, to the motors. I can share some numbers. So it's a 7,000 pounds max takeoff weight aircraft with 800 pounds of payload. It's for four passengers plus uh, their luggage. Uh, we have a trunk in the front. Whatever you can bring on a, on, a, on a commercial aircraft with you in the cabin, we can bring on this aircraft. So four passengers, 7,000 pounds. We fly up to 4,000 feet. Uh, the range is 90 miles. Uh, so one, roughly like 150 kilometers. We fly at 120 knots. Last but not least, there is no pilot on board. So the pilot is on the ground and it's not a regular pilot. It's not a pilot with a, a stick and rudder pedals. It's a pilot with uh, a mouse and a keyboard. And it's not even a pilot, it's a, it's a supervisor because the aircraft is fully autonomous. Uh, it takes care of its own safety. There is a communication li link with the ground. And, uh, but even if we lose the link, uh, the aircraft is totally safe. Uh, the aircraft can make it, its own decisions. It, uh, it is equipped with a lot of sensors, cameras, radars, transponders, so that the, the, the aircraft knows exactly what's around it. And uh, it can safely land, can safely accomplish its mission. And then the, the supervisor on the ground is just there to check, make sure everything goes, goes fine, and then they can intervene at any time if anything goes wrong. 
and we call that person on the ground the supervisor. But we truly believe in autonomy. Autonomy and then really putting the, the pilot on the ground and having the pilot oversee multiple aircraft is really key in our design. We believe it's safer. Uh, today, a lot of uh, accidents are due to human errors. And today, on, on today's commercial aircraft, a lot, most of the functionality is already automated. Like more than 93% of the functions on an aircraft are fully automated. We're just leveraging that. And there is, this is not black magic. Uh, autonomy is like we're not using AI, machine learning, or stuff like that. We're using very prescriptive algorithms and, and function allocation, and uh, latest, the latest sensors and the latest software. And we're just following very pragmatic and uh, regular uh, certification process to demonstrate that our system is safe. Autonomy allows us to deliver a safe aircraft. It also allows us to provide more room for passengers. So it allows us to scale and then to uh, also answer the demand and from an economical point of view also, that's a key driver for us. Let's have a look at the cabin. So it's a full passenger cabin. We maximize the use of the cabin and we can have like full passengers. You see they have room, uh, we have headsets, we have screens, you have room to put your cell phone and so on. So it's, there's plenty of space on board. And I don't know if you've noticed, but there is no wheels. We have skids. It's very optimal from a weight point of view. And we try again, like simplicity and keeping the design as simple as possible, reducing the number of parts is really a key driver for us. Uh, so that's why we don't have wheels. As you can see, we, we are in the cabin. So I'm sitting in the front. Uh, there is like three other seats uh, over there. There is no controls, like uh, there is no stick. There is no rudder pedals. There is no avionics uh, screens. Uh, there is no like indication or anything like that because it's not needed. All of that information is uh, handled by the machine, by the computer, and then shared with the ground station. And uh, what you can see is that you can enjoy the ride. You have like access, we have screens so that you can see what's happening. So we'll communicate with you, tell you exactly what's happening. You can uh, reach out to uh, someone on the ground who can uh, like address any of your questions, any concerns, and then you can just enjoy the ride. Uh, it's, uh, there is a ton of space. We try to make it very modular and very accessible. So like making this cabin accessible to people with disabilities is really important for us. We perform a lot of surveys where we invite people with various disabilities to come, try and give us feedback on things that they like, things that they don't like. And then we just keep improving the cabin by doing this. And we've been doing this for like a, several years now. And then so we've leveraged a lot of feedback and we're continuing to do that. Uh, as I speak, yesterday we had a session. Uh, with, uh, with folks just like an every age, uh, every background, and, and uh, so it's, it's really, really interesting. And so we do really care about the comfort of the passengers. Uh, noise as well is a key driver for us. So uh, just one, one note on noise, we've increased the number of blades on our propellers compared to the previous generation. Like if you look at Gen 5, we have two blades on the propellers. This one has five in the front, four in the back. We've also extended the size of the blades. The idea is to reduce the blade loading. And by reducing this, you reduce the noise that's generated, uh, both externally and internally, and the, the, the level of vibration. So the ride is, is way smoother, and then you, we generate way less community noise. And also, the last thing I want to mention is that we're designing to the highest safety standards, the same as the, the, the latest commercial aircraft, 10 to minus nine. It means like there's gonna be less than a chance in a billion that anything wrong will happen. And those are simple like the highest safety standards today. And then so we're doing that from, for everything. Every system is designed to that standard. And we're also using the latest certification standards, safety standards when we design the systems in terms of hardware and software, the similarity requirements. This is really top of line. So we are really aiming high. We're aiming for the highest safety standards. Sebastian, thank you very much. Uh, now the two big questions. Uh, when will you start flying and when will you start selling? Oh, so that's, those are very good questions. So we're not only designing the aircraft and the entire system, we're also going to operate it. So we, we're also going to be the airline operating the system. So in, at the beginning, we will not sell the aircraft. It doesn't mean that eventually we, we, we might not sell it. But even at the beginning, we want to operate it because it's a new mode of transportation. It's very innovative. So we believe it's uh, more appropriate and safer for us to actually operate it. So we have a big announcement coming up soon. Uh, we're going to do something really big at, uh, at Oshkosh. So I can't share the details right now, but stay tuned and uh, you'll find out soon. Sounds like we have to come to Oshkosh. Sebastian, thank you very much for Thanks. this uh, thank exciting you. interview and introduction into your company. And for you, you know the deal, like and subscribe and see you in the next one.